This is LXBN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. The Second Circuit Court of Appeals recently decided its 2010 summary judgment against Viacom in a billion dollar copyright infringement suit against YouTube was premature and is reviving the suit now. To discuss the case, we bring in Genevieve Merker of Foley Hoek and their blog, Trademark and Copyright Law. Starting off, Genevieve, you know, this is a, a bit of an older case somewhat, but what is the background here? Sure. I, the case was originally filed in 2007. Um, you know, litigation takes a while, but I think one of the thing that's, things that's going on here is that it's not just Viacom v. YouTube. There are a whole lot of plaintiffs. It was actually two cases that were combined. So there are a lot of parties. Discovery takes longer when there's more parties. It was two or three years in Discovery, I think. Um, and then the district court heard summary judgment motions in 2010, and there were a lot of amicus briefs. There were also a lot of amicus briefs on appeal, so it's just... There are a lot of parties in the internet space who are really interested in this case, and that draws things out. Yeah, there's so much hanging on it, trying to find out, you know, what level of responsibility does YouTube have for the copyright infringing content that appears on their site. Um, so in order for Viacom and other relevant parties to come out ahead in a suit like this, what would have to be shown in, you know, in this litigation? What would have to be, uh, you know, proven? Well, so this summary judgment dispute, there were cross motions on summary judgment, um, is only about whether YouTube qualifies for the safe harbor under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Mm -hmm. And the plaintiffs raised a number of arguments by which they said that they don't qualify. So if they win on any one of those arguments, then YouTube doesn't get safe harbor. Um, the main one that the courts are talking about is whether YouTube had actual knowledge of specific, well, actual or constructive knowledge of specific instances of infringement. But there's also a willful blindness argument. There's an argument that they have profited from infringing activity that they had the right and ability to control. So any one of those could strip the uh, safe harbor away from YouTube. Um, of course, if that happens, the, the plaintiffs still have to show that YouTube was actually guilty of direct or uh, secondary copyright infringement, but that's going to be a lower hurdle on these facts. Yeah, the, I think that, yeah, the biggest thing, and you touched on this in your blog post, is that... Um, you know, it's not the, they have to be, you know, knowing that these things are going on, not taking strong enough measures to prevent it, and, and that type of thing, correct? Yes, that's the main, the main argument that um, the parties are, are talking about is whether, it, the, the safe harbor protects online content hosts from uh, infringing content posted by their users. Mm -hmm. If they have certain measures in place, if they take it down, if they know of it, for example, and one, the main issue was whether they have to know of specific uh, instances of infringement or if, they can, if it's enough that they have a general knowledge of infringement to get rid of the safe harbor. And the Second Circuit agreed with the district court on that point that general knowledge of infringement is not enough to defeat safe harbor. Mm -hmm. It's just that the Second Circuit thought they actually had specific knowledge in this case. Yes. And, and where do you think it's going to go from here? You know, what do you see as the most likely of outcomes or even just the, the next step in the process? Well, from here it goes back to the district court, and the district court has to um, take another look at the summary judgment evidence. There, it was a voluminous summary judgment record, I think the Second Circuit said. There was a, a whole lot of uh, evidence submitted along with the summary judgment motions. And um, so it, basically all the district court did in the first round was to say, uh, you know, general knowledge of infringement is not enough. And they, it, the court didn't kind of look at the specific facts. And so the Second Circuit pointed to some emails that, do really kind of sound like they knew there was infringing content up there and they didn't do anything about it. They were just saying, well, let's wait until somebody sends us a takedown notice and then we'll take it down. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the district court has to look at that evidence and it might be that there actually is evidence of specific, um, knowledge of specific infringement. Could be, however, that it's only as to a small portion of the clips that are the subject of this suit. So, you know, maybe the damages won't be a billion dollars like the plaintiffs are looking for. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to watch. And like you said earlier, there's many parties who are going to be very interested in seeing what the outcome is here because, uh, you know, YouTube, for, for good and bad, there's a lot of copyright infringing content on there, and it remains to be seen what level of responsibility YouTube has for that. You know, you think they're respected in most regards under the D Digital Millennium Copyright Act, of course, but um, we'll have to see where it goes from here. Yeah, and YouTube says, of course, that, you know, it's not affecting their current operating practices, so I don't expect YouTube to actually go away. Yeah, definitely, certainly not, certainly <laughs> not, because, I, I, yeah, it's, they're going to be an interesting company to watch, but this will be interesting to see how this particular case plays out. Um, yeah. Once again, that was Genevieve Merker of Foley Hoag and the Trademark and Copyright Law Blog. For more on their story, be sure to check out their blog at 
trademark and copyright law blog.com. And of course, we have tons of content on this case as well at lxbn.lexblog.com. Thanks, Genevieve. Thank you.